God can't exist. Here's why. Part 3. Where is God? For a being that's supposedly omnipresent everywhere, we barely find it anywhere. So why does God hide itself? And the typical response to this is that, well, God doesn't want us to be forced to believe in him. If he came down and showed himself, we'd all believe in him and there's no point in having faith, right? But the problem is, can I really be forced to believe in something? No, I'm not forced to believe in things I believe in. I'm convinced by the evidence, right? The evidence influences me to believe in things. I'm not forced to. I can't force myself to believe. The point is that people can still reject things that they might have proof for or evidence for. They still might reject it. We can still choose with our free will to reject something, even if there's proof. But more importantly, if God exists and is omniscient, meaning it knows all, it would have the ability to know exactly how to convince me that it exists without forcing me at all. In other words, God knows exactly how to come down and reveal himself to people in a way that does not affect their free will at all. And many theists should agree with this because many theists claim to have revelation of God. Many theists claim that God came down and revealed himself to them. This happens all the time. We hear about miracles, even the resurrection. God supposedly came down and revealed himself to thousands of people, hundreds of people. Clearly, God can come down and reveal himself in a way that convinces people and still upholds their free will. Free will is still completely intact. And those theists that claim to have seen God are convinced of God's existence because of that revelation, and they still believe that they have free will. So clearly, it's possible to the theist that God can come down, reveal himself in a way that will convince us yet not affect our free will. It's obviously clear, and theists would have to be ridiculous to reject this premise. So the next question is, well, what's stopping God from doing this to everybody? If God can reveal himself to one person, why can't he do it for everybody? And a typical response to this is, well, you're just not sincere in your search. You're not really looking for God. You're not really sincere and genuine in your prayer. That's why God doesn't reveal himself to you, because you're not being true and honest. Okay, well, first of all, uh, most atheists I know were Christians or Muslims before. But even if that's anecdotal for you, surely there's got to be at least some people in the world that exists who are honest, sincerely looking for God, but are just still not convinced yet. Theists would have to be crazy to, to reject this premise as well. Out of 8 billion people in the world, I'm sure there is at least some who are just not convinced, but really looking for God, really honest, and perhaps even want God to be real. So we are left with a loving God who supposedly wants a relationship with us, but for some reason he chooses not to reveal himself to reasonable people who are honestly sincere in their search for God. So either God doesn't want people to be convinced that he exists, or, and the, and the, and the consequences of that would be punishment, hell, for not believing in him, which means that God would basically be telling people, yeah, you're going to go to hell. I'm going to remain hidden. You're going to go to hell. Ha ha. There's nothing you can do about it. Or you have to believe on faith only, even though many thousands of other people are convinced by your revelation. I think that's ridiculous. That's obviously unfair. Or the more likely option to me, this God doesn't exist. It's way more likely that this God doesn't exist when the when you consider the fact that he revealed himself to many people, supposedly, but will not do it for the vast majority of people on the planet. It seems more likely that uh, those few people that have claimed to see God are either mistaken, delusional, or perhaps lying. But also, for the people that he did reveal himself to, supposedly, why can't God reveal himself to them more, more often than he already does? Why can't God reveal himself to people every day, every minute? Why can't God literally come down and, and live by, side by side people today, either to some people or to all people, right? There's got to be some reason why God's hiding himself so much. And you might say, well, God doesn't want to reveal himself completely all of a sudden. He wants it to be a slow development in terms of your relationship with him, right? He wants to give you little bits and pieces of him. He doesn't want to full out reveal himself to you at one time he wants to make it slow okay it still doesn't change the fact that god knows exactly how to convince me that or anybody that he exists 
without revealing himself fully. God still knows, because he's omniscient, how to reveal himself to all people on the planet in their own specific ways, in ways that they would be convinced, without affecting their free will, and without disturbing their relationship. Right? God knows exactly how to do it. He's God. He's omniscient. He knows all. He definitely knows how to convince people that he exists without affecting anything negatively. He can reveal himself in a perfect way. This is really the crux of the issue. The crux of the issue is that regardless of all the theodicies you bring up, you try to excuse the hiding with, there's no reason why God can't reveal himself to everybody and anybody in their own ways. So either God hasn't revealed himself to me yet, or he doesn't exist. And I think it's way more likely that it doesn't exist. But also, theists claim all the time that the reason why we exist in the first place, right? The, the, the main purpose as to why we are here on the earth is to develop a relationship with God. I mean, this seems so integral to theism or the Christian doctrine that God wants to talk to people. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to love us, right? And this is the biggest thing when it comes to Christianity. It's all about the love and Jesus' love and a relationship. Well, a true relationship, a tr true love is when you're open to the others, right? It's when you're developing this relationship in a meaningful way, in a way that means something for people. It seems to me that a relationship is not one where you just hide yourself from, from, the, uh, from your partner and go, you better believe in me on faith, and then you run away and never return. That doesn't, that doesn't seem like a very good relationship to me. If the point is, if, if, if relationship is the main key of Christianity, why is it so hard for reasonable people, or at least um, you know honest people, to form relationship with, with God? If God claims to want one with us, why is he hiding away from us? And this seems to be one of the biggest problems. We are left with a world, a universe, that God supposedly created for us to have a relationship with it. That's the main reason. And God gave us these amazing brains, able to calculate quantum mechanics and, and black holes and big band nucleosynthesis and string theory and all these amazing mathematical equations using logic and reasoning. But for the most important thing, perhaps ever to possibly exist, right? A relationship with God, one of the perhaps most important things ever, literally the most important thing for existence. God throws all that away and says, nope, you don't use your logic and reasoning. You must use blind faith. Just, just pretend, just make believe on there. And there you go. That's a relationship. That doesn't seem like a very valid one to me. To throw away all this amazing intellect, ability to reason, ration, and do these amazing things and form amazing relationships and love, real love. And God says, nope, I reject all that. You must just pretend I'm there. And there you go. Voila. This seems like a very big problem if you believe that God is a loving God. It seems that if he wanted us to really love him, he would show himself more often, especially to people who are sincere and honest, like most of us, especially us atheists.